I thought we could take a few moments to finish up our discussion on double system sound. If you remember from the last time we recorded uh, this person speaking using a built in microphone, the wireless lavalier attached to the person's shirt, as well as a shotgun mic and just a regular room mic. And so I thought we would go in and take a look and see how these microphones and their placement and the type of microphones sound different. And hopefully it will help you determine uh, what microphones you should be using when you're doing interviews and stand ups and other things. So instead of using the project files that we shot last time, I thought I would just bring in some video that I had shot recently for a piece on my own YouTube channel. So what I'm going to do is I've just got a small selection of this. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new sequence. And the first thing that we probably ought to discuss when we are doing double system sound is how do we sync up all of the different audio together to ensure that it is um, all, all in sync, not the band, but you know, so that it's all playing back at the same time. So I'm going to bring in, here's my lav. And just to show you how this works, I'm just going to drop all of these different audio tracks in different tracks and at different locations. In Adobe Premiere, this is super, super simple. This is something that up until a few years ago might have caused trouble uh, quite a bit of the time, but now it's as easy as one, two, three. So the first thing that we've done is we've brought in all of our clips. Uh, this could be a really long clip, could be a short clip. In this case, it's just a selection of the audio from a much longer piece. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and select all of my tracks. That includes the video with the original audio track from the camera. It includes the love, the room and the, uh, and the shotgun microphones. And the third thing I'm going to do is just right click and select synchronize. Now this is going to bring up a button that's going to ask us how we want to synchronize. And by default, the first thing it'll come up is a clip start, which is what we don't want. We want to actually sync to the audio. So we're just going to go to audio and we're going to say, okay, what track do we want to use as the reference track for all the other audio tracks to sync to? We're going to use track one, which is the microphone attached to the camera. And then all we have to hit is okay. And after or, uh, Premiere, we'll go through and line everything up perfectly. And now we have all of our clips ready to go, and they should be in sync. Let's take a listen to each one of these. The first one that we're going to take a listen to is the original microphone audio. Before we take a listen to these audio tracks, maybe I should explain how the microphones were set up in this situation. So I am sitting at my desk addressing the camera. In this case, it is the Canon EOS uh, 5 or I'm sorry, the EOS R, not the EOS uh, R5, although I would like to have that camera. Uh, and on top of this is the Rode microphone. I forget this is uh, the Rode video mic that is plugged right into the camera. It's pointed right at me. And it is probably, I want to say maybe four feet away in order to get a good distance and framing for this shot. Uh, so we're able to hear this particular audio. The lavalier microphone, of course, is attached to my shirt. It's outside the shirt uh, so you can see it. Uh, in an interview situation like this or a documentary, that might be okay, although we have talked at times that it's probably a better idea to try to hide that lavalier microphone as best as you can by putting it inside of the shirt. And there are a bunch of um, um, videos that I have shared with you that will show you how you can hide that lavalier microphone. And you should probably follow up on those and make sure that you understand how those uh, work. The shotgun microphone is about two feet away from me, and it is just outside of camera uh, sight. So it's just outside the camera frame pointing directly at me. So it's getting good, clean audio from there. And then the room microphone is just the, uh, the zoom six in. Uh, and it is again, about two feet away from me, just outside the frame below me at the uh, bottom part of the frame, capturing audio on the stereo inputs. So let's take a look at and take a listen to those different audio tracks. Nothing there. There's nothing to show. And so I thought in this update, uh, I would give you some, some, uh, some apps that I'm using, talk to you about some apps that I'm using. 
as well as some plans uh, going forward. So this isn't horrible, although you can hear there is a PC running, so you can hear the fan noise from that. And generally, there's kind of an openness to this microphone uh, because the mic is so far away from the subject. Let's bounce now to the lavalier microphone and give it a listen. Nothing there. There's nothing to show. And so I thought in this update, uh, I would give you some, some, uh, some apps that I'm using, talk to you about some apps that I'm using, as well as some plans uh, going forward. So that one's okay. You can still hear kind of the room noise. We can take care of a lot of this in post, the, especially the, the fan from the PC. This lavalier microphone and every lavalier microphone is going to treat audio differently. This one, I think, picks up a lot more of the bass of my voice, which I'm not a particular fan of. This is not my favorite uh, sounding microphone of the ones that we have. Let's jump down to the shotgun microphone and let's listen to it. Nothing there. There's nothing to show. And so I thought in this update, uh, I would give you some, some, uh, some apps that I'm using, talk to you about some apps that I'm using. That one sounds okay too. The, I think the biggest problem with this one is it's a little sharp. It's a little crisp, which is fine by me. I I'm fine with this. Uh, but this one, the shotgun mic really picks up the, um, the PC noise in the background because it's pointed. The PC is literally right behind me, uh, running its, its, uh, its fan. And that's what you're hearing from that PC. Again, that kind of noise can be taken out. What we're really interested in at this point is the sound of all three of the audio channels and which ones are going to be best for us. So again, here we have the built-in, uh, well, not the built-in, but the Rode video mic. Nothing there. There's nothing to show. That one sounds a little bit too far away. And so I thought in this update, uh, I would give you some, some, that one sounds pretty good. That one's not bad. I mean, that's definitely one that can be used uh, for this piece. And then finally, we have uh, the shotgun microphone. Some apps that I'm using. Talk to you about some apps that I'm... I'm personally, I like the shotgun mic myself. Uh, you might find something different. But let's just now take a listen to the, to the Zoom uh, 6N that is using the stereo microphone like two feet away. So I thought in this update... Uh, I would give you some... That one sounds some, supernatural. Uh, some Not supernatural, like, whoa, supernatural. But more like, it sounds very clear and it's easy to understand. Unfortunately, it is picking up so much room noise and it doesn't have really good placement. It, it just sounds like it is off a little bit and it doesn't sound like like the the audio is coming to, that, to those um, microphone pickups uh, correctly. So I probably wouldn't want to use this. But you can definitely see your mic placement is really, really important in this situation. Now, is there one of these that is the only way to do this? No, probably what I would do is if you're doing a very important interview, I would definitely use the shotgun microphone personally, because uh, depending on the person, they may not like people touching them. Uh, they may be in a rush and they may be getting up and down and you're not going to have time to mic them up correctly. So if it's an interview situation for a documentary or a news piece, then having them being able to sit down with that shotgun mic placed properly, it's probably going to give you your best sound, but then you need to have some backup audio. So definitely record from the camera, depending on how far away you are. And again, if you're 10 feet away from the subject and zooming in to get a shallow depth of field with that, uh, that, with that shot, uh, that built-in microphone isn't going to do very good. Uh, certainly having a second recorder on set, uh, kind of like the Zoom that's just recording audio just in case. It's never a, uh, a bad idea to have backup audio in case you want to uh, or need to pull from that in case one of these other microphones go down. But when we have a lavalier, a shotgun, a room mic, and the built-in mic, man, you've got enough audio in case one of these outputs go down that you're going to be able to get something. And like I said, the little noise in the background it's going to be pretty easy to clean that audio up. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. So that's double system sound. That is how you can sync your audio tracks together. You can then go in and decide which audio track you want to keep, and then you can delete the rest. And because they're synced together, uh, you're going to have really good playback throughout the rest of your piece. One thing that I should probably point out to you is linking. So let's just say that I want to use uh, the lavalier microphone for this entire piece. And you can see that if I move 
this video and audio track around, the lavalier mic audio doesn't follow. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these other two tracks because I'm going to just say, hey, I don't need those. What we can do is we can select all three of these tracks together. We can unlink them. Okay, so now this audio track is its own thing. So I can delete that if I want to. You don't have to, but you can. And I'm just going to move this track up, select both of these tracks, and then link them together. And now I have my video and the good audio all synced together and locked together and linked together. I thought so you're not update, going to have uh, I would any kind of problems some, going forward. Some uh, some apps that I. So while the short demo that I showed you works in Premiere Pro, that's not always the case. Sometimes you're going to have audio recorded at the wrong um, frequency. You're going to have one recorded like 44.1 and something else recorded at 48. Bad, 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 bad. Don't ever do that. Or you may just have general drift from your external recorder away from your 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 camera, uh, unless you're using like time code, jam syncing, those kinds of things, uh, which should resolve that problem. But just say you are an independent uh, producer, you've got your recorder, you've got your camera, you want to do some double system sound so that gives some people the uh, freedom to move around, also gives you freedom to move your camera around without causing problems. Uh, what is another solution that you might look at in order to sync all of your audio tracks together? Well, I wanted to show you uh, Red Giant's Pluralize just very quickly, just so you understand how that works. Here is Red Giant's Pluralize 4, and this couldn't be easier to use. The first thing I'm going to do is take my video and my audio and drop that in, and then I'm just going to bring in, here's my lav mic, here's my shotgun mic, here's my room mic. And once these are all brought in, and this may have exported the entire audio, the entire, yeah, this looks like it uh, exported the entire uh, seven, 10 minute audio. I'm only looking at a short bit, but it'll still work with this. And depending on how long your clip is, it may take a long time for Pluralize to import and um, display the waveform or any video information that it needs to display. But this is actually a good example to see how well will these items sync together because we have a very small chunk of video and some very long bits of audio. And I'm going to say somewhere around here is where everything should line up. But you bring in your video, you bring in your audio, and you can have multiple cameras. You can have multiple audio sources, uh, especially if you're doing uh, a multi-track session. I really enjoy using Pluralize to get everything synced together because I can just bring everything in. Once it's in, I click clink, uh, I click synchronize. And there you go. It bumped this video track all the way down here. I can spot check this if I want to. I thought in this update. Uh... Sounds good. Then I can just export this as its own project, its own XML file. Uh, let's just call this one class sample. And then I can say that I want to export it in a Premiere Pro format, although you have some other formats as well. I'm going to export that. And when I'm done with that, all I have to do is bring that back into Premiere. I just have to go in and import that particular XML file, and it will bring in the project and the files and keep everything uh, uh, synced together and give you a, sync, a sequence at the same time. So this is a process that I use a lot when I'm doing multi-track editing. I bring camera one, two, and three plus my external audio tracks, which are usually two to four external audio tracks. I bring them all into Pluralize, let it do all of its crunching, let it do all of its syncing. If there is any kind of drift, it will try to calibrate or try to compensate for that drift. And then when it's when I'm satisfied and when it's satisfied, I can just export it, bring it into Premiere and start editing my multi-track session. So there you go. There is how to sync your audio in Premiere and in Pluralize and how the choice of microphones can sound very different, even though they're all placed relatively close to where I was at or to where your speaker is at. Hopefully this gives you some food for thought and hopefully gives you some ideas on how to capture some clean, clear and consistent sound on your next video project and bring it in to your editing system with ease.